Well, for those of you who've been wondering where this series has been going, don't worry. It's just been, or, or it's always been a matter of making sure we have the right scheduling, but thankfully, Adam here caught me at the right place at the right time, and so it's time for our Irish quiz master to once again do his thing. So with that in mind, greetings people of the world, Matthew back with you here in Overall Autism for another edition of Matthew vs. the Irish Quiz Master. So, Adam, our good friend from Ireland, welcome back. Thank you very much. I, I guess I caught you at the perfect time because straight after this is another fantastic streaming of the Final Fantasy saga featuring your um, fictional alter ego. Yeah, that's yeah. That video. Um, I just finished editing and started uploading it at, right as Adam um, made the call to get my attention. So he timed it pretty good. Excellent. I thought the first time I saw your face on my Facebook chat list, go for it. <laughs> and if I, if I didn't get a response, you were in the middle of a stream. Exactly. Anyway, it's the final edition for the Category Quiz app on my phone. Um, but this time, instead of categories, we're go well, we're going to put six categories on the board. But this time, put you under pressure since you're pretty used to it in terms of battling monsters efficiently, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, you know how it works. Uh, six categories at random. You only have 30 seconds to answer each question. All right. So that's going to be a bit of pressure. And I've got 30 seconds to both deliver the, uh, the question and the answers if you need them right there. Right. So it's going to be hard for both of us. <laughs> But we'll think of something anyway. The grid's uh, loaded. Alright. The, the categories are entertainment, sports, economy, music, history, and religion. That's a pretty rough set if you're not really into any of those kinds of things. Well, so, some of them I am, some of them not so much, but we'll see how this goes. Excellent. Now, which one would you like to start with? Might as well go like we did last time and just go from left to right. That we entertainment then. 30 seconds reads a question, remember? And if you know the answer to a question, get it done straight away. Of course. 30 seconds now. Who played Edward Scissorhands in 1990 movie? Johnny Depp. Oh, Johnny Depp. You're in there. It's 23 seconds left. And that is the correct answer. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be close, I'd imagine. Yeah. You don't know this, sir. Number two, thirty seconds. Now, Lara Croft is a fictional character and the protagonist of which video game series? Tomb Raider. Treasure Raider. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider's there. I have that. Whew. And you're right on that one. So far, so good. Those, have you ever played those on your channel? Um, Tomb Raider, no. No. No, the, it, it's not a series that necessarily interests me, although, um, my aunt recently gave me, um, the first three games of Uncharted, so I might have to get get some sort of interest in that genre. Well, now you know it. At least you know what it's about, anyway. Mm-hmm. Number three. Name the actor who appeared in the full Monty and played Fred Flintstone in the Flintstones and Viva Rock Vegas. Johnny Depp, Robin Williams, Mark Addy, Charlie Sheen. What? Oh, wow. Full Mo Um, it was the third guy. Um, what was his name? Mark Addy. I take that as yeah. an answer then. Yeah. Because that, that was a British movie. That is the correct answer. Yeah, the Full Monty was a British movie, and when you said that the other three were all American actors, I was like, nah, it's the, it's the guy whose name is obviously British. Well, I didn't mention them as being American actors, but, you know, they're only easy if you know the answers. Right. Two left entertainment, another 30 seconds, number four, five. How many Oscars did the 2000 Ridley Scott film Gladiator win? Three, four, five, or six? I'll go with six, because it won Best Picture, so I imagine it did win more along that line, but obviously not that many. Five. 
It was two. it was five. All right. Yeah, it was the Best Picture winner that year, and Russell Crowe won for Best Actor in a Leading Role. Yes. Um, anyway, three out of five. That one total points seven hundred and fifty-nine. We move on next door to sports. How do you like your sports? Well, uh, it's pretty good, good for me, unless the questions are all Brit British-oriented, which some of these have been in the past, so we'll see how this goes. Exactly. Number one of five, 30 seconds. What was the nickname of American basketball player Irvin Johnson? Magic Johnson. Oof, straight in there, only six seconds. And of course, it's Irvin Magic Johnson. Number two. The Dauphin Libre takes place in France. What type of event is it? It's cycling. Oh, a cycle race there. You're certainly <laughs> wasting no time with these. Yeah, it, it's, it's a preparatory event for the Tour de France. Good. Which, um, of course, a certain Bradley Wiggins and co have won quite a lot recently. What about Chris Froome? Yeah, yeah, oh, he yeah. he's won that. He won that too. He was the reigning champion right now. Mm-hmm. He just won this uh, past June. Here's yeah. number three. What nationality is Fernando Gonzalez who knocked Annie Murray out of the 2009 French Open World Champ Tennis Championship, brother? Argentinian, Chilean, Ecuadorian, Spanish. I think he was Spanish. Because I, 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 the only Argentinian tennis player I know is Juan Martín del Patro. He was Chilean. He was Chilean. Alright. At least you heard the question good. That's nice. Yeah, I did. Move on to economics next. Total is 1,194. Economy. Which stock exchange activity is reflected by the Nikkei Index? The Tokyo. Not Hong Kong? Yeah, Tokyo is the Nikkei. Hong Kong is the ha Hong Kong is the Hang Seng. Well, of course it is. I know my biz I know that already because I read the markets too. <laughs> Here's number two. In marketing, what's the product's USP? Oh. The ultimate selling point. Undeniable special profile. Unusual sales pitch. Unique sales proposition. USP. Um, sales point. Selling points? Because, yeah, that does make sense. Oh, it's a unique sales proposition. But obviously, not right. That doesn't sound, that doesn't make sense either. I think that's a flawed question. Mm hmm. Uh, I'll tell them about that in a while. Anyway, next one is music. What type of music would you like? Um. I fancy myself as being having a broad range of knowledge of music because my mom introduced us to so much music when we were young. So she she introduced us to quite a number of genres when we were growing up. So I'd, I'd like to think I'll do well. Okay, one thousand three hundred sixty-three at the moment. Here's the state of music can add a lot more to that. Number one. Posh, scary, sporty, ginger, and baby were known collectively as... As the Spice Girls. The Spice Girls is there, I take that. And you waste no time in getting that one correct. You're off the mark of that one. Well, if you're a millennial and you don't know who the Spice Girls are, you're... <laughs> yeah, you're, you, you can't really qualify. A bit of an ill-cultured person. Here's number two. Which pop group sang about a teenage dirtbag? Wheatus, Sum 41, Alien Ant Farm, Jimmy Eat World. Teenage dirtbag? I've never heard that song, but I'm going to go with, I'll guess Jimmy Eat World, because I think that sounds like the kind of song that they would do, but I really have no idea. This is just a guess. It was a bad guess. The correct answer was Wheatus. And I've never heard of them. They're British, obviously. <laughs> How could you tell they were British? Well, because I've never heard of them. <laughs> I'll probably look that one up for you. Here's number three. 
for you in a, in a bit. Anyway, not much luck from music. 1,532 in your bank at the moment. Two categories left. The next one is history. What was your favorite genre of history? Oh. I really couldn't say. I, I like to think my knowledge is more towards modern history, like the last 200 years. Do you know much about Canada's history? Yeah. All right. But do we really expect any of the Canadian history questions to be on your British quiz um, no. thing? <laughs> no, well, let me tell you, man, I don't think this app is totally British. You know, it, I hope it does go around the world in some place. Otherwise, the next time I meet you, we'll take on, we'll take, be taking on the latter quizzes, and maybe there might be more Canadian than you think. But for the moment, we're stuck here. 30 seconds <laughs> is history number one. What definitely happened at the KT Boundary event? X-rays killed most plant life. Earth was struck by an asteroid. Dinosaurs became extinct. Or glaciers of the Ice Age receded. KT Foundry? Yes. What happened there? I'm going to go with the first one because if it's a foundry, then obviously a foundry is a building usually associated with industry. And none of those other three events could have possibly be involved with in, with that. Correct answer is dinosaurs became extinct. And I'm not sure if you heard me properly, but I said KT Boundary events. Yeah, yeah, I probably did not hear you correctly. Never mind. Only yeah, I heard I heard you say foundry. Yeah, I've already, I've already got three seconds to get the question and the answers out to you properly. Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah, we might, we might next. Yeah, next time we might not necessarily want to do this time limit thing, just so that we can make sure that we're hearing each other properly here. Well, let me tell you, in the latter quiz, you've got five minutes to answer ten questions. So if you don't want to hear something properly, I can repeat it to you. <laughs> okay. Then, yeah. Uh, there's just the one left, and that's religion. Uh, one five three two in the bank. Let's hope you can get five out of six in the one hundreds. Which part of the world did Buddhism first come into uh, to being? Japan, South America, West Africa, Northeast India. Northeast India. Yes, yeah. it did. And Buddhism. Yeah, because because Ch China wasn't in that list, so India was the next logical thing there. Here's number two. In the Christian calendar, what is represented by Ash Wednesday? The first day of Lent. Yeah, first, day, first of day of Lent. Oh, I said that straight away. Mm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. As we know, Lent goes on for 40 days, which leads <laughs> up to Easter. Right. Uh, number three of five. Which biblical character is best remembered for entering the lion's den? Daniel. Oh, Daniel. He's there. He's there, so I said that. Yes, he did. What exactly was the lion's den, from your understanding? Pardon? What exactly was the lion's den in the Bible? Um, it's where Daniel was sent to be executed by the Romans. He was thrown into a lion's den, and he prayed to God that he would be spared. Was it an actual den full of lions? or was Yeah, it just a yeah. Yeah, that, that was, that's literal. He was actually thrown into a pit of lions. Oh, God. I guess that's probably how brutal the Old Testament can really sound. Mm -hmm. And I guess it wasn't just God that was posing as brutal. Hey, if you, w you want a really brutal, you really want a brutal Old Testament story? Um, how about the one where there was this king named Nebuchadnezzar who ordered his people to worship a... Uh, big statue as his god, and if they didn't, they would be cremated alive. Talk about um, the brutality of, you know, the past. Mm-hmm. And I thought Moses was getting angry because people worshipped a golden a golden calf made from melted jewelry was rough enough. Mm-hmm. Or that it was bizarre enough. Well, <laughs> there you go. That was, that was actually from the book of Daniel, if you can believe it. So, oh. kind of goes along with the theme, doesn't it? Probably. Uh, anyway, 
away. Two questions of the two questions left, two thousand three hundred and fifteen points in the bank. Let's so hope we can at least clear one category. Mm -hmm. Here's the fourth religion question. What is the name of the famous chapel inside Windsor Castle? Queen Mary's Chapel, Queen Elizabeth's Chapel, St. James's Chapel, St. George's Chapel. Oh wow. Yeah, that, that was definitely more unexpected. Um, I'll go with St. George's Chapel because he is the patron saint of England, so therefore it would make sense if it is named after him. It is named after him. It is named after him. Awesome. Good work. Good work. Anyway, last, last question of the grid, 500-point religion. You get a 100-point bonus for that on top of whatever is left. Here it is. Which Indian festival is celebrated once every 12 years? Pagoda Mila, Kumbha Mila, Kurukshetra, Ganesh Kathorhi. I apologize for my pronunciation. Yeah, it, I believe it's the last one because um, Ganesh is very widely revered in India. So, plus he's known for having a lot of arms and stuff like that, so... Stop talking. It was Kumbha Mila. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, was, I was trying to say that Ganesh is known for having a whole bunch of arms and depictions of him, so I was thinking like maybe each limb represents the year of the cycle. Here's the final score, of Matthew. 2,754 points. Under time pressure. <laughs> that was on... You did pretty good. Pretty okay overall. Considering. Yeah, I kind of salvaged it. At the, kind of salvaged it at the end there. Yeah, you did. Okay, get rid of that. And uh, ooh, he's got a brand new logo as well. Look at that. Oh, nice. And there's also multiplayer mode in this app, which means I can pretty much, um, you can pretty much play with players from all around the world on the same grid. Yeah, you could. Perhaps, but that's a totally different thing altogether. That. I probably wouldn't be able to match properly <laughs> with you at least. Right. Anyway, that's the and that's the end of that of the mobile app. Anyway, because the next time we meet, uh, we meet you. Hopefully, we'll be taking on the ladder quizzes. Up. Uh, well, 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 we'll probably do. Or we'll probably do them half and half if you do. If you're quite good at them, particularly with the geography department, mm -hmm. which we'll probably start with just to make it easy for you. <laughs> All right. That Thanks for that, Adam. Yeah, so th thanks for... We'll make sure you stay tuned to Nouveau Autism, because coming up in a few minutes will be his latest Final Fantasy fourteen stream. A day in the life of his... Well, well for obviously I'm going to have to upload this first. I'm going to have to upload this first, and then, <clears throat> of course, I have the other video that is um, uploading as well from the new Final Fantasy fourteen event. So... Yeah, it'll, it'll be a busy morning, and that's all before I go to do my weekly um, autism mentoring session. So, it's going to be a busy morning. We, well, we might be able to well, stream, we may not, but we'll see what happens. Well, in that case, I apologize for making it twice as busy than it normally would be. Well, I'm, I'm glad at least you got the opportunity, because I know you're um, going back to school soon, and so that... I, I, launched school, I launched my final year of school yesterday, actually. So I am going to be quite busier than usual. But mm -hmm. I suppose I'll see you about October, Halloween weekend or something. All right. Just to get you, just to get that one started on the way. Yeah, that that'll be great. So thank you very much. Good now. Yeah, thank you very much, Adam, for um, getting in today, and we're glad we had the opportunity to quiz with you once again. And so yeah, hopefully we will be able to do this again soon. So. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching another edition of Matthew vs. the Irish Quizmaster here at Let's Play Novora Autism. And until next time, everyone, take care, and I'll see you soon.